Welcome to Ash on Film. This week, I am shattered. I'm a little bit lightheaded from the lack of sleep that I've had. But instead of doing any thinking this week, I'm going to let the internet tell me stuff. I'm going to take what is described as a personality test backed by science. This week is about the big five. The test says that the big five is the way that most psychologists measure personality traits. The five traits are extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, negative emotionality, and openness to experience. You might have seen these personality traits arranged into an acronym that spells OCEAN, but when I see OCEAN test, I just think that's going to tell me whether I'm a crab or a shark or a blobfish. kind of want to take that test more actually. But the big five doesn't do what the hell is that? Is that a lawnmower? In winter? <sighs> 20 minutes later. So I just spent about 15 to 20 minutes waiting for the leaf blower to finish up and then started recording again and after about another five minutes realized that the mic wasn't recording. It looked like it was, but there was nothing coming up. It's okay, I didn't get as far as the test. I was just talking about the test. It's still going to be a surprise. Anyway, the big five doesn't deal with absolutes, which is really good because loads of personality tests always tell me that I am an extrovert, that that's a fact. And I never feel like one. I think of myself more as a social shifter, so I can turn it on when I need to and then turn it back off when there's nothing left and it's all dried up. It says that it's going to show me how my personality compares with that of the average American. So I'm really sorry for skewing the results with my Scottish personality. It may be interesting to see how close or distant I am to the average American personality though. What if I'm internally American? Okay, let's find out who I am. First question, I tend to be quiet. The first question is always the most difficult one. I find this hard to answer. I don't tend to be quiet, but I also don't tend to not be quiet. It's very circumstantial. I'm gonna go with neutral. Okay, the next one is easier. I am compassionate. I worry a lot. I do and I don't. I worry about the strangest things. Not the things you'd expect someone to worry about. I don't worry about job interviews or dates and stuff like that. I worry about going to a show with my friends and Jimbo the drag clown is there and he does his weird latex meat performance and looks me dead in the eyes. So neutral for that one. I am fascinated by art, music or literature. All of the above. I am dominant and act as a leader. Ah. I am in a phase of my life where I want to do less of that, but also I am most likely to lead a group of people. If I find myself in a group directionless, then I will lead. I have little interest in abstract ideas. Strongly disagree. This whole channel is founded on abstract ideas. I am reliable and can always be counted on. Well, here I am running on fumes, making a video for my YouTube channel. I am outgoing and sociable. I am. I actually really love meeting new people that I get along with really well. But I also like to be left alone too. Agree a little. I have few artistic interests. Strongly disagree. All of my interests are art at this point. I am a complex and deep thinker. Hmm. Am I? I am less active than other people. Active how? Like in terms of exercise or like creative things or like going out? I'm just going to disagree in the less active thing, whatever it means. I have little creativity. Disagree strongly. Well, there's not that many questions, so time for the results. <laughs> so this is my chart. I scored high on openness to experience, agreeableness, conscientiousness and extroversion and very low on negative emotionality. My shape is not totally dissimilar to the American average. It's more exacerbated in places and then stripped back in that negative emotion space. Already I'm thinking that's not a bad thing. It does give you some further insight on each trait. High openness to experience, your curious brain is actively seeking new things to explore. 
you're likely to find success in careers that value that. The arts, for instance, is on the ball. Be aware though that dangerous drugs be aware though that dangerous drugs are among the things you're more likely to be willing to try. Substance use disorders are a serious risk. <laughs> this test really said you shouldn't do drugs. Like you specifically? No. This wee graph, like I relate to this. Intellectual curiosity, creative imagination. I'm so cool. Agreeableness. You may find a deep identification with the possibly too trusting, unfailingly polite and relentlessly helpful Ned Flanders. Oh my god. I am actually wearing a Simpsons t-shirt today. It's not Ned, it's Homer, but still, like, what were the chances? Not gonna lie, I kinda don't wanna be Ned Flanders. Although he is also the devil. Maybe I can get on board with that. I don't think I'm supposed to think that much of the Flanders reference in the results, but the test went there. High conscientiousness. You're one of the organized, the responsible, the possibly just a wee bit boring. Well, okay, that's maybe just the worst insult I've ever had, but oh well, whatever, never mind. They're likely to be religious and join organized clubs. No. You're likely politically conservative. This part of the test is broken. Low negative emotionality is generally associated with good things. For instance, at work, it correlates with job satisfaction, commitment to the organization, and a tendency to happily stay in one job for a long time without burning out. That doesn't really ring true with the actual jobs <laughs> that I've ever done, but I would happily edit forever. Like, I love doing that so much. My negative emotionality chart has got to be one of the smallest graphs that these researchers will ever see. Hi, extroversion. Your life is pretty good, and even if it's not, you're more likely to feel like it is. Yes, I am aware of this. I know it's not something that everybody can tap into, but I can think myself happy. I kind of found it through stoicism and this idea of not letting someone else or something else affect my mood. That really appealed to me and it's very freeing if you can do it. You are likely to have what scientists call positive subjective well-being. Basically people like you are happy independent of a lot of factors that should otherwise affect their happiness including relationship status, class and employment status. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe she's deluded. It's not really being deluded. I just don't rely on external factors to make me happy. I derive joy from my own reality. I can say that this test was pretty accurate with the exception of the conscientious part. That may have been informed by the questions that I struggled with and I answered neutrally, but given that it's only one part out of five, I'd say that it's 80% accurate. Anyway, thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll link the test in the comments below so you can go and take it and then let me know what you get. I'm pretty agreeable, so if we're opposites, I'm gonna be nice to you anyway. I'm gonna Ned Flanders away and just like be a good person. And you'll have fantasies of me in a ski suit. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. See you next time.